Hi there, and welcome to Lecture 2.1. Again, this is Professor Maggie Shafrar at CSUN, um, and this lecture is part of my Cognitive Psychology course that's online this semester. Uh, I want to start this mini lecture with another sort of big picture overview of where the field of cognitive psychology came from. And I think it's important to start with this farcical comic that I've um, not so cleverly adapted to show that cognitive psych a lot of cognitive psychology came from this battle between uh, Noam Chomsky, the psycholinguist who said that we are born ready to learn, um, we don't need reinforcement, and B.F. Skinner, uh, the most famous person in behaviorism, who argued that um, uh, language develops from reinforcement. Okay, so let's go back, just to remind you, B.F. Skinner, one of his favorite quotes, I did not direct my life. I didn't design it. I never made decisions. Things always came up and made them for me. That's what life is. So for Skinner, um, we are like a, a little plastic bag or a piece of trash being blown around in the wind. We don't have free will. We don't make decisions. Everything we do, everything we are, is a result of what we've been rewarded for doing or punished for doing in the past. Um, so Skinner said, uh, all behavior, all behavior can be explained by conditioning. Um, he was not really interested in cognition. Um, that would be the, the neural processes that happen in this black box. According to Skinner, the only thing that we can study is stimulus response patterns, what goes into the brain and what comes out of the brain, but not the cognition or the cognitive processes that happen in the brain. Chomsky, on the other hand, said, no, 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 no. Behaviorism cannot explain cognition. And Chomsky argued that the most interesting parts of language cannot be explained by reinforcement or punishment. Um, he's, he argued that um, Skinner's research, while obviously true, could only be applied to very simple processes. And so Chomsky argued that Skinner's work was actually irrelevant for the study of language development or other cognitive processes, complex cognitive processes and behaviors. Well, let's step back for just a minute and, and ask the big picture question. Who cares about any of this? Why do we care about cognition? Well, it turns out cognition had a big role in your very existence. So about 100,000 years ago, both Homo sapiens, the species that we are, and Neanderthals, which was a previous species, actually they existed on the planet at the same time. Um, now, Neanderthals were stronger than we are. They're stronger than Homo sapiens. And so you would think, well, why didn't the Neanderthals just beat us all up? And why are we not Neanderthals? Why are we Homo sapiens? Well, it turns out that um, Neanderthals didn't have a lot of cognition. They developed tools, but their tools never changed. They were very, very simple. They didn't create art. They didn't have the cognitive skills necessary to cooperate. Um, and they did not domesticate animals. They didn't have chickens or goats running around. What Homo sapiens had, what we have, is cognition the ability to work with each other, the ability to plan long-term, the ability to create art, and the ability to evolve in our use of tools. So cognition is how we essentially outfoxed and survived beyond the Neanderthals. If it weren't for cognition, the Neanderthals would have beaten us up and we wouldn't be here. Um, so that was a huge cognitive revolution, the change from Neanderthals to Homo sapiens. So the change from big, brute, everything defined by strength to Homo sapiens, where your ability to get around depends on your ability to think and reason and make judgments more so than your ability to beat people up. Although we probably all know a few people who still act like they are uh, Neanderthals. But there was a second cognitive 
uh, explosion too. And that was in the research and the study of cognitive psychology. This happened in the 1950s and 60s and 70s as researchers tried to build computers that would think. And as they're trying to figure out how can we build a computer that thinks, they looked at humans and said, aha, you know, humans can think. Why don't we figure out cognition? Why don't we understand thinking in humans? Then we can figure out how to build machines that think. And that's essentially what they've done, right? Researchers have built everything from self-driving cars to computers to um, those little scan codes at the grocery store. Okay, that's the end of mini lecture 2.1. I'll be back with 2.2 in just a minute.